that's the end of that. So we are now going to hear from the applicant's uh, representative. Ahora escucharemos al representante del solicitante. And Mr. Mora, if you could please speak slowly, since you're going to be translate, uh, some of the information will be translated. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, uh, can you hear me? I sure can. So I'm logged in with my... Can you hear me now? Yes, you're fine. Okay, so I'm just zooming that. <laughs> no phone. <clears throat> Perfect. Um, first of all, thank you so much for, for all, all of you to be in this call, uh, be, be available to review our project, and a special thanks for Adrienne. That it was quite a process to get to this public hearing, but I'm very happy that we are here. Um, thank you, Adrienne. Um, the project. I, I, sorry, uh, Mr. Mora, I would just like to ask if you could pause uh, every couple of sentences so I can go ahead and translate. Oh, sure. Ya, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and translate. Gracias a todos este, por estar aquí y revisar nuestro proyecto y gracias al, al personal de planeación y Adriné por esta, um, ayudarnos con este proceso. Go ahead. The, the project is located at two vacant parcels at the intersection of Thomas and Pruett Street. Thomas el, being... El, El proyecto está localizado en dos parcelas vacantes en la esquina de, de Thomas y... What's the second street? Pruett. Y, y Pruett. Pruett is an unimproved street and Thomas is a fire road. Pruett es una calle um, que no, no está muy construida y, y Thomas es una, es una calle de... Um, para incendios, para este, también los incendios. The front lot for the properties is on, along Pruett, but for this project, we are proposing to maintain that front lot on Pruett, but car access from Thomas and improve the street to 20 feet wide along Thomas. Sorry. El frente, el frente del, del del lote es por la calle Rue. Este proyecto quiere mantener ese el, el enfrente de, del lote como Rue, pero este, la conexión para autos sería en Thomas y se ampliará la calle por uh, 20 pies. The project is a single family dwelling um, for a family, um, about 4,000 square feet with an attached ADU accessory accessory dwelling unit per state law of 800 square feet. El proyecto es, uh, es familiar de una unidad de 4,000 pies cuadrados y también ten, tendría una unidad de accesorio eh, por el estado de California de 800 uh, pies cuadrados. The project is adjacent to the ridge line of this hill, and therefore it, it was designed to stay below the 15-foot maximum height envelope um, dictated by uh, the Northeast LA ordinance. Can you repeat that again? Sorry. Um, the house was designed to stay below a 15-foot maximum building height per Northeast LA ordinance. La, ca la casa estaría bajo a uh, 15 pies uh, al lado de la, de la, por la ordenancia de, de Ridgeline um, en, el, en el noreste de, el, de Los Ángeles. And for that reason, when you look at the design, you will see that the building is broken into small boxes to step down the hill and follow the maximum height envelope. Y por eso si ve el diseño del proyecto, ve que está este, en diferentes, es, uh, como tipo caja, bajo el uh, lado del cerro. Another thing that we worked on accomplishing with this design was mitigating the amount of export out of the site. For that reason, we terraced the site, so we cut at the top 
and fill at the bottom. What was that first part to mitigate the export? Correct, grading export. Para mitigar este la exportación de um, de terreno, um, cortamos este el lado um, por arriba. And that results in the request for additional retaining wall because the best solution to mitigate storm water is to use uh, planters in this site. And, oh my God, this is going to be a long one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, eso, por eso resultó en, en, el, en uh, la solicitud de tener otra pared de retención uh, para poder tener uh, planteros. Okay. The first retaining wall is for the house entry due to the low house profile. We needed the wall to frame the entry into the house. La primer pared de retención es para la entrada de la casa porque por la este, baja altitud de la casa. The second one is to retain the hill to create flat areas and to fill some of the grading that is being cut for the house. La, la segunda pared de retención es para el cerro, para crear un grado más plano. And that wall is being used to build a swimming pool as well. Esa pared será usada para crear una, una alberca también. The third one and, and the additional one that we're requesting is to build a lead planter, a stormwater treatment planter at the lowest point to collect stormwater from the house. Y la tercera sería para poner uh, plantas que capturan uh, um, agua de, de la lluvia. Um, I have the presentation in slides. I don't know if you guys want to go, maybe this will take too long, right? Um, I'm trying to focus on the main points. Uh, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> this is for me too, so I'll look at the slides. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I wasn't prepared for the translation part of it. Yeah, it's okay. Um, Ernesto, um, maybe I can just... see the slides. Oh, they can. Can I see the slides, Don? I can no, share can. screen if that's possible. Yeah, you can share I, the screen. Um, I have to promote them to panelists so that we can share yeah, screen. Yeah, if you can. Uh, Ernesto, you're going to have to explain the slides. I don't think they can see it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. If, if well, actually, why don't you just tell them this is a slideshow that's for the zoning administrator and uh, no need to translate it. Um, esta, esta presentación que sigue es para el um, administrador de zonificación y este no será... Uh, traducida en este tiempo. And then if they want something, you can come back to it later. Okay, go ahead. Ricardo, you can uh, go forward now. You're muted. Can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So this image shows you how the house steps down the hill to stay below that 15 foot uh, maximum height envelope. It also shows you how we terracing down um, to mitigate the slope and try to achieve that cut and fill on site. We are exporting a little bit below the 750 feet maximum export cubic yards that we, we would be allowed. And we are also asking for um, a deviation from the requirement of the road being 20 feet wide all the way to the base of the hillside, just because of the hardship that, that would cause for everyone. I realize that. <laughs> yeah, in this case, yeah. Um, but we are um, proposing three foot dedication as required by DOE along Thomas. And we are proposing also to develop the street all the way to the top of the hillside 
which I'll show you in, in another view that uh, speaks more about that. Uh, this is an aerial view just to show you how the, the house steps down the hill. Uh, it creates terraces for the house and we are also proposing green roofs uh, to mitigate the impact of the house on the landscape and we are locating systems like solar panels on the higher roofs so they're not visible uh, from the street. This view here is you know, the, the main street view or along Thomas. Uh, you can see that that keeps a very low profile uh, due to the proximity to the ridge line. It has a higher profile on this side just because we are cutting down to provide access to the garage way. Uh, to the garage. Uh, the house has a, an attached two-car garage and we are proposing two outdoor parking stalls um, on the left here. Um, this view shows you how the house steps down the hill and by doing so from the top of the hill you still have views to the to downtown. The community had a, a concern about developing this site and losing that ability to one hike up the hill and they can still do it along Pruette and from the top of the hill to enjoy those views which are still possible. And on the rendering here I'm sh showing the end of the street but we still have to coordinate this with fire department. Most likely there will be a turnaround of some shape at the top which improves also the access to the top of the hill. And in, in case of uh, fire, uh, it provides a better access for the fire department. So you're going to put in a cul-de-sac or something there? We don't know yet. We need to coordinate that with BOE okay. and the fire department. But either a cul-de-sac or a hammerhead or just redesign how the three streets in, in, intersect, right? Because the three paper streets already create a T-shape that naturally provides a turnaround for yeah. Yeah, um, the big permits will, will dictate that. Um, this is a view from the bottom. Basically, these two gray boxes are the attached ADU um, that face the, uh, the Pruette side with access from the top, uh, steps on grade. Uh, and as again, I'm repeating myself, but as you can see, the house stays below that 15 feet line by stepping down the hill. Uh, we have a survey showing the exact location of the ridge line, which we use to design the house. Basically, that line is it's here on our drawings. This is the 50 foot projection, everything within that envelope and 50 foot from that side as well stays uh, below 15 feet. Uh, I can just quickly highlight the retaining walls that I was mentioning. This is the one along the house entry. This is the one that retains part of the fill and at the same time works as a shell for the pool. And this is the one for LID planter at the lowest point that could collect water from roofs and, and decks to that point. We can resolve this in a different way. Uh, given that it's a hillside, a planter works, it's more stable than putting rain barrels in a platform. Um, it is aesthetically not as, as, uh, as good and it's also structurally challenging because the tanks would be considerable in size. So we think that building this third planter uh, wall and LID planter is the best solution but it's not the only one, obviously. Um, again, sections just showing how the house stays underneath that envelope. We're showing the natural grade line here. So you can see that the cut that we're doing here, oh, this is actually not a good section to show that, but this one, some of the cuts, then it's fill in these areas. Again, some of the cuts, filled at, at the bottom there. Um, and the, the, uh, the lead planter would mitigate even more of that cut on site. Uh, floor plan very quickly. Main entry right at the center here from Thomas. Car access also from Thomas. Additional parking on the south here. Uh, a 
open floor plan with living spaces and um, office, media room, and then the ADU is attached to the house with entrance from the side. Going up to the second floor, the footprint is much smaller. It's just the bedrooms, again, to, um, to stay under that envelope. Roof, as I mentioned, we're putting the solar panels on the highest roof so they stay out of sight. And the rest of the house is a combination of decks and green roofs to mitigate the appearance of the house, given that it's right at the top of the, the hillside. The elevations just show what I just said. Um, I can just highlight that we are representing the retaining walls here, the three retaining walls that we are proposing. You can see on this elevation as well. Uh, low profile of the house along Pruette on this top elevation. This is an elevation that you never see the house this way, right? It's because the house projects back, back. Um, but it's it's a more of a diagram to show you that retaining wall behind the pool, and the second one, or in this case the third, for the lead planter. The material palette, it's a, a warm neutral tones and a combination of natural materials like um, concrete or um, green roofs. And we are also proposing a composite deck, decking that uses recycled plastic materials or fiber cement panels that also have a percentage of recycled material. Uh, we are including more technical information about the, mat the materials. Uh, including the pavers. We are using permeable pavers to mitigate the quantity of storm water that, it's, uh, that could potentially flow to the street or down the hill and cause ero erosion problems. So we are containing that on site. Um, we presented the project to all of the adjacent neighbors. All of them signed a letter of support that I shared uh, with Adrien. I, I believe you should have it too, Charlie. Only one of the neighbors did not sign. We had a, a, a language barrier issue presenting the project to him. Uh, he doesn't speak English or any of the languages either me or Duke speak, so we couldn't communicate with him. We also presented the project to the neighborhood council. Um, they're not in favor of developing the, the hill. Um, that was very clear and they're not supporting the project but um, we believe the project is um, it's good for the community and for the city uh, for multiple reasons. For the community, one, because it provides okay, better... Uh, could you... Oh, should I slow down here? <laughs> no, th this I want translated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got it. So you can go a little slower. <laughs> okay, we'll do so. Okay. Um, so if you can translate this. This is Cora. I will be oh, translating. I'm, okay. I'm just a little unclear where you wanted me to start translating. Right, I'll, I'll start from the beginning. Okay. Um, we believe that the project it's uh, good for the community and for the city for the three uh, following reasons. Okay, hold there. <laughs> eh, nosotros creemos que este proyecto será beneficioso para la comunidad y para la ciudad para las tres razones siguientes. For the community, because it will provide access and maintenance of a site that it's abandoned at this point. Para la comunidad, eh, este proyecto proveerá acceso y mantención de un, eh, un lote que es vacante en este momento. And by abandoned, I mean there is the positive trash, which can be a hazard condition at the site. And by developing, we fix that issue. Y nosotros eh, eh, resolveremos el problema de basura que se tira uh, en ese lugar. Um, the project is good for um, the, the city at large, given the housing crisis that we have. It's any housing development helps in any way. It's a numbers game. One more house and one more ADU will help. 
El beneficio para la ciudad es que eh, estamos en una crisis de viviendas en este momento y este proyecto trae dos unidades, una casa y un, eh, una unidad accesoria. The project will also um, benefit the community financially because of the fees that we'll have to pay uh, for approval of the project, including linkage fees for affordable housing, and that's helpful. El proyecto también eh, será un beneficio para la comunidad porque eh, tendrá que pagar eh, cargos eh, para la vivienda accesible. One of the main arguments from the neighborhood uh, council against the project is to not develop this land, but this land has been zoned to be developed. And by building here, we alleviate the pressure of building where wildlife is more important to protect. This is an urban site due for development. Mm. El, el Consejo de, del Vecindario eh, ha, ha expresado su oposición al proyecto eh, porque no quieren ver el desarrollo en este lugar. Eh, sin embargo, eh, el lote sí eh, tiene zonificación que permite la, la construcción y, y con construir aquí eh, se dejan otros, la, otros eh, lotes donde hay vida silvestre eh, disponibles o, o, o libres de, de desarrollo. Yes. Uh, and that concludes uh, my presentation and um, our comments. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we'll now open it up for uh, public comment. Ahora abriremos el, el periodo de comentario público. And I would ask everybody, since this is being translated to us, uh, please speak slowly so uh, Ms. McNaughton can uh, translate. Ros Rosalio, por favor. Eh. Yes, I'm, I'm Ros Rosalio Munoz, and I, I uh, have lived in that area from from 1995 to 2005, visited the home of my brother just below that site uh, on Abrigo, which is about half a way down the hill towards uh, East Lake. Uh, and I have worked and lived in Lincoln Heights and Highland Park, and, uh, uh, and actually in Maravilla area uh, for the last 70, three years well, where the Rapeto Hills, of which this is one, uh, go, stretch from uh, actually, uh, I guess, from, uh, well, the Angeles Crest Mountains all the way to Montebello, if not uh, beyond. And um, these are some key hillside places in the city relatively it's not like beverly hills or rolling hills or malibu hills or any of these other places it's more of a low and moderate income housing uh, around them and just below them and my brother living on a brigo he's which is right part right next to pruitt and just below actually uh, thomas uh, where many of the abandoned houses that have been built there and have not been used have, have thrown a lot of trash down the hill to the what my brother has owned uh, there since the uh, 1980 until the present. Um, and number one, I think the area should really be kept entirely th that is not developed above the confluence of uh, Abrigo and Pruitt should be open space, entirely open space for the, for the city and especially as a, uh, as a park if possible. And uh, I could, would see, like to see a lot of trees and other things there, just as we have in uh, uh, Debs Park about a mile and a half along the ridge that I have walked walk quite often. 
um, to uh, uh, and uh, the projects there to have indigenous plants to bring the indigenous birds and animals uh, of that here and that uh, oh in past centuries a uh, 19th century that sheep raising in those hills destroyed over the years and much other destruction but it also is to me i consider it historically sacred land of the tongva people uh, that uh, had a, a village down uh, across the ridge and probably uh, ha use that as a major kind of thoroughfare towards uh, to the Lincoln, what we call now the Lincoln Heights area. And uh, up there, one of the most wonderful things you can do along that ridge is view where the Tongva live, just, just about the entire spread of their territory out towards the Pacific Ocean, which you can see on days, the reflection of the sun on the, sh uh, the shoreline, out towards Orange County, out into the San Gabriel Valley uh, and uh, up into the San Fernando Valley up towards Glendale uh, and, uh, and parts around Pasadena. You can't see the Channel Islands, but you can see uh, quite a few things. And development like this would also change the residential character of the surrounding areas in Happy Valley and Lincoln Heights in particular in that it would be really luxury housing that would be a wedge to make this change the entire character of, uh, of the local area and be what we used to call poor people's uh, removal of Lincoln, much of Lincoln Heights and Happy Valley and other areas. Uh, and that would be in line, I'm afraid, with some of the uh, plans like the city planning recommendations that are going to be going to the city council for the central city, which is like one of the centers of Tongva culture called Yangna that I learned about in Lincoln Heights at a house at a school that was torn down for the Golden State Freeway, which affected my life and pretty much. But um, we learned in the third grade about Yangna being the the, uh, a central place where there was much water, the confluence of the Los Angeles River and the Arroyo Seco River that made that a more, uh, uh, an ideal place for habitat, human habitation. Uh, but you had to be a little bit higher uh, than at the level of the, of the river and the stream uh, because of flooding. And that's why they were there. And it was prime land for the Spanish colonialists to take it away from the Tongva people, which was the beginning of, you might call, gentrification. They used to call, it was for gente de razón, which in their feudal order was uh, real decent human beings and not savages like the Tongva. And we could, uh, in fact, for my church parish of East Los Angeles, uh, we think that that's something that could be, I mean, Epiphany Episcopal Church, it used to be a parish, it's now a mission church. But uh, because in the 70s, I was working there as a coordinator for the East Northeast Committee to Stop Home Destruction, where we tried to stop, uh, we did stop much of the development to make that a, a, to a higher end housing along those hills uh, and to actually, when they were planning to extend the 710 freeway and uh, it, make what is now Debs Park, make it into the have a golf course and hotels and things on, on, the, on those areas. And that's a signal of what we think is in line now, given some of the planning to make downtown LA stretching to the... Uh, um, LA River into a, an international destination by uh, 2040, but I think uh, get well along the way for the 2028 Olympics. 
Okay, Mr. And Munoz, can you uh, go back to the uh, house here? <laughs> no, well, you can see all that. No, but you, you can see all that. I can oh, I realize that. <laughs> okay, and you can understand a little better about how that this is human habitation uh, has been uh, kept more and more from the indigenous people and their descendants, mestizos like my myself, are, are kept, have, are being pushed more and more out of their areas. In my lifetime, out of Bunker Hill, out of Chavez Ravine, really, which was not called Chavez Ravine, that was Loma, Bishops, and, and Palo Verde, uh, uh, neighborhoods that are still in our memories, but also the uh, extension uh, part of, of trucking areas for the railroads and, and others, the building of the freeways, et cetera, et cetera. And so we've experienced that and now are facing that again. It's a big concern and it will be much more of a concern. And the Planning Commission and others will be hearing. We did get a hearing way back in the 70s from Thomas Bradley, who became mayor, who saw there being a value in, in our community uh, to protect the low and moderate income housing of that area. Uh, and they used to say it was the plans for the city under Calvin Hamilton, et cetera, were uh, to make these big centers uh, and uh, as, uh, and that brought us the, the high rise and all these other other things that we have in downtown LA, uh, but that we should preserve the low and moderate income uh, housing around the downtown area and uh, such as Lincoln Heights, Boyle Heights, Pico Union, Westlake, uh, Temple Bowdry, which now has basically disappeared and uh, other areas. And we know we have that that's still in the memory of many of us, and it's not going to be forgotten, and we're teaching it all around. So it's a, it is a related, and I know you look, uh, your smirk is, uh, indicates your value of what I'm saying, perhaps. And uh, that's okay. We've dealt with that before. Don Jefferson, <laughs> planning staff, uh, Mr. Charlie Walsh, we have... Uh, 41 attendees uh, for this okay. item and 20 speakers with their hands raised. So uh, I'd like propose, to limit time. oppose this uh, proposal. Thank you, sir. And thanks for the history lesson. It was uh, quite good. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, next speaker is Ancis Hosel. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? I sure can. Sure, um, I'll keep it brief. Um, I would just love to, to advocate for this to be kept as open space um, in the areas of Northeast Los Angeles, East Los Angeles, there's such a lack of open space in the city and, and in general, there's a lack of open space and this needs to be pre preserved for the people, for the community, not for one individual who wants to commandeer the hill for his own personal benefit. This should be zoned as per, uh, open space. I don't know why it's not. Um, this is like the biggest community benefit we have in this area. It attracts people from all around to enjoy the views. Um, this would disturb wildlife. Um, I really appreciate the previous commentators uh, educated history lesson. And uh, I think we should look at that history and preserve our unstable hillsides, um, especially when it comes to the history of Chavez Ravine and the way we've massacred the Legion hillsides, which is where I grew up. Um, yeah, I would just really love to see this um, preserved as open space as a community benefit, not um, just a pathway for profit and capital, uh, capitalist greed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Next speaker is FS. Hi, can you hear me? Sure can. 
Hi, thank you for your time. Um, I first want to say uh, that it's a true disservice to the Spanish speaking community for the slideshow to not have been translated as the slideshow literally explained the outrageously massive scale of this project. Uh, next, it's important to note that the hill is not sustainable for such a massive project. On October 14, City Attorney Mike Floor filed 35 charges for the construction of very similar projects on Laurel Canyon for safety violations. And I believe that that sets precedence for these kinds of projects and structures like these on unstable hills, regardless whether it's been zoned or not. The houses that have already been built on flat top are already eroding. Uh, lastly, this project truly strips Los Angeles of the few natural green spaces we have left to destroy such a beautiful piece piece of land for a frivolous and selfish project is truly violent, not only to the hills themselves, but to the community as well, given that it will absolutely lead to further displacement and change of the community demographics, as it's been seen through gentrification. To say that the neighbors support this project is false, and the developers even admitted that they didn't connect to the Spanish-speaking community. Um, please note that majority of the people who live in Lincoln Heights are Spanish-speaking, so who did they really reach out to? Uh, to say that the site is abandoned is a complete lie. This space is used daily by the community and people all over Los Angeles, and the community actually organizes to clean these hills because we care about these hills. This project is selfish and violent. Um, one very last thing, I don't think the agenda for this meeting was posted to the site on time and therefore also violating Brown Act rules. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller is Steve Lucero. You can hear me? I sure can. Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Steve Lucero, a local native uh, from Alhambra, California here. Um, this is, uh, I, I was very insulted by uh, the speaker, uh, the developer saying that uh, this is not a thriving natural environment uh, and that this should not be, uh, it should not be preserved. Uh, this is not good for our community to have a pool on the local hillside. Um, uh, I know personally that the neighbor who has a construction up there right now uh, purposely has set out trash there. I thought it was ironic that he used that for a reason, uh, as, as if it's some sort of abandoned area. But it's absolutely not. Um, one of your reasons uh, for this development was that it's zoned for it, but I'm, I'm so sorry. This community does not accept that as a reason. Um, this community is not in support of it, and we ask that you respect that. Nobody supports this project. I'm sorry. And I'm insulted by your attempts to have any persuasion on this community. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller is Serena Teresa. Hello, can you hear me? Sure can. Okay, great. Um, uh, first of all, thank you for letting me speak. Um, I'd like to read a letter that I wrote in response to this development. So I'm just going to start. Uh, to whom it may concern, I'm writing in defense of Flat Top Hill. I strongly disapprove of the proposed property to be built on Flat Top Hill. This development is extremely large and does not benefit the community, which has been historically comprised of working class people of color. Furthermore, with increased urbanization, this space is one of the few undeveloped hilltops in Los Angeles and should not be sold to the highest bidder. Do not approve this development. The community does not want it, and we have voiced it several times. Seeing this property built upon our sacred hilltop, one of the last pockets of nature in the city, would be a great injustice to the historic community. To approve of this site is to advocate entirely against the needs of the community and ignore the voices from within it that are desperately calling for the rejection of this development. The approval of this project is a statement that you do not put people over profits or consider what the community declares is best for itself in your decision. Once again, I strongly urge you to consider the influence your actions will have on the course of the future of the few remaining undeveloped hilltops in Los Angeles and disapprove of this project. And that's the entirety of the letter, which I also sent as an email um, before the 11 10 deadline. But I would also like to touch on um, the points that the speaker made 
about how it benefits the community and how it um, helps with the housing crisis. And I just want to say that that is Hului for a 4,000 square foot single family development that is just absolutely lavish and decadent in a community that is like other speaker, like other community speakers have said before me, um, historically working class and people of color, which is significant in this case because it's we're being pushed out um, as the rent increasingly goes up and makes it more difficult for families with children that have been generations deep in this area to stay. So although it may sound repetitive, I agree with all of the statements of the community members that have made before me, especially the first speaker. I'm sorry, I forget what his name was, but I think that all of those points were very, very important and should be taken, not lightly, very seriously in your decision making. Um, see, I believe I had one other point. Mm. Well, it's escaped my mind. So that is all I ask that you please disprove of this project and put the community's needs above the profit of one large mansion development that does not serve us. Thank you. Thank you. And did you say you sent your letter into here by email? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, to the adrene.nalcom oh, okay. at lac.org. Yeah, I've got about 10 to 15 letters I haven't opened yet, but okay. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure well, great. That's one there. of them. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next caller is Melanie Belomo. Hi, thank you. Um, I live in Lincoln Heights. I go up to Flat Top often um, with the Lincoln Heights Hike Club. It's a group of children who like to spend time outdoors in Lincoln Heights. This is the only place that that can happen um, in truly in nature. I want to talk about a couple of the items that the presenter brought up. Um, the statement of mitigating the impact of the house and the landscape, um, there is no mitigating the impact of this house and the landscape. It being there has huge impact. There's no way around that. So I, I don't appreciate that it's being presented as, you know, this green roof and you can't see the solar panels from the street. Um, that's neither here nor there because it has huge impact on the landscape and community at large. Um, regarding us still having access to the view, it, that again, like that slide, and I, I do like Fernanda had mentioned, <laughs> I wish it would have been translated as well because that slide you can see that entire view, the entire hillside is commandeered by this one residence and sure, maybe the community may still have some access, likely not, um, a after the, this is built, but it's off to the side. Like you can't see anything. And I don't know if you've been up there before, but up until recently, it was an entire 360 degree view um, of Los Angeles. There is one house that's obstructing that view now. And this mansion would completely obliterate that. Um, take Again, I take offense to it being called an abandoned site. All of the trash that is up there is due to developers, all of it waste and paint and trash it is a nightmare to look at and it is the community the surrounding community that takes care of that land that has been stewards of that land that removes the trash so no developer who's coming in to build their quote unquote dream home is going to care for that land because they would have been up there already doing it and they're not they're only adding to the trash and the disarray and the destruction of habitat um let's see here what else did i want to say yeah, yeah, that one house does not fix the housing crisis. It will do the opposite. So the scope of this house and how expensive this house will be and the value of it will affect all of the surrounding values of, of the neighboring houses, thereby increasing the price of these houses, thereby further pushing out our community who is traditionally very extremely low income. So this house, this mansion will cause displacement. So no, it does not, it's not a numbers game. It is not like one more house 
helps to mitigate the housing crisis. This house will worsen the housing crisis because of the displacement that will take place. And also, you know, it raising money for the community by putting money towards affordable housing. What needs to be understood is that we don't qualify for affordable housing. We don't have enough money. We don't meet, you know, the, the, the maximum. We don't make enough to qualify for affordable housing. Maybe extremely low income housing, maybe. But affordable housing means nothing to us because we can't even afford that. So that, again, is neither here nor there. Um, yeah, and then a very weak argument about it actually protecting the habitat by being built. It's so backwards that I, I'm not even going to comment on it further. Um, I do want to add, I am the wife of an LA County firefighter. I don't know if this is common knowledge, but it is in my household. When you have a cul-de-sac and you have an area that is difficult to get to, um, and there's a fire, especially in a hillside area, um, the trucks and the engines that are massive, um, they have to find a safe place to do a three-point turn prior to entering the area where the fire is taking place. They have to back up into that cul-de-sac to be able to properly reach the area that is of concern so that if there is an issue, if there is something that gets out of control, they can safely remove themselves from that area because let's not forget these aren't just trucks and engines that are going up into these these spots these are people these are my husband the father of my children these are the people that have to go up there to take care of when there is a fire that takes place so i i will say personally i have a huge problem with you thinking that it's okay to just quickly add a cul-de-sac in to accommodate for the fire trucks and the fire engine that would have to go up there if there is a fire hillside which we know happens all the time because of the state of the world right now. So I have a huge problem with that. I don't think you're taking into consideration the lives that are gonna be put on the line, having to back these humongous engines and trucks up to this cul-de-sac that you've made where there is not enough room for them to do a natural turn. There just simply is not. And I think that that needs to be stated. And lastly, all of this is really unimportant because unimportant because the, the truth is this is sacred land. There should be nothing built on this land. I don't care that it's owned by somebody. I don't care that it's been sold off. It should never have been. It is stolen. It should be returned. And and that is, I think that's all I have to say on it for now. Thank you for, for taking the time to listen to all of us. Thank you. Don Jefferson, planning staff. Uh, as a reminder, we do have plenty of callers um, wishing to give public comment. If we can try to keep our comments brief and not repeat anything, um, we would appreciate it. Thank you. The next caller is Jordan Loepke. Hi there. Uh, my name is Jordan. Can you hear me? Sure can. Hi. Um, so I live on uh, Alta Street, which is in Happy Valley. It just runs below Flat Top. Um, I can walk down, my, down the street right on top of the hill. It's beautiful. I go there every week. Um, I'm a renter. Um, I wish I could afford to buy my house, but I can't. And uh, I would have to make 100 grand a year to buy it. I really wish I could. Anyways, I'll try to keep it brief. Um, and I'd just like to say, Mr. Rausch, if, if you're the, the person who receives a lot of anger here, I, I apologize. Um, okay. But, you know, there is a lot of anger out there. I'm not going to add to it. I think I, I fully concur with everyone who's spoken. And I, Melanie really hit it on the head there. Um, she said what I wanted to say about um, not improving the housing crisis. I guess I'm asking myself why this site was chosen. I think that there are plenty of areas in Los Angeles where this project could work well. Um, the hills near Glendale, Tohunga, some little valley in Mount Washington. I just think that choosing a cherished community gathering place is very short-sighted. Um, I'd like to add one thing about community access. I strongly disagree with the developer's assertion that this would improve access. I would just note that uh, the home at 2828 Thomas, which is right below the gate that's currently there on Thomas Street, they've placed trees in planters in front of their house, which stops anyone from parking there. That's just the beginning so so when you want to go up on on top of flat top and you want to walk your dog there's no parking because these people think it's more important to have an empty street in front of their house than 
than public parking. So first of all, I don't even know how that's legal. And if you can stop them from doing that, that would be great. I find it really insulting. Um, so that's that's just an example. So what you have is you have some people, I'm sure they're very nice people who've paid a lot of money, maybe I don't know how many millions of dollars for this home, living there, they're not going to want teenagers up there having a beer at midnight, you know, having a blast. They're not going to want that. And, and that is what, flat. I mean, that's a crude example, but there's something so special about that. Um, you know, I've had friends of mine tell me they had their first kiss up there. You know, my landlords who grew up in Lincoln Heights, you know, they met at the high school, like they've cherished flat top, blah, blah, blah. All this to say, um, it's not going to improve access. I'm sure these people are going to be calling the police on people. You know, that just increases the, anyways, I'll stop there. One more thing, you know, when I arrived in Lincoln Heights four years ago, uh, Flat Top had a 360 view of LA, and that is so rare. Like, where else can you see the Hollywood sign, all of Long Beach? Uh, you can see everything. And already there's been a new development at 2831 Thomas, which has already blocked the view a good 20%, I would say. Um, so this development would really block the view at least by 40%, if not 50%. And I'm, I'm just sorry that it's just, it's just not possible. I, I, I just really, anyways, I've said enough. Um, I concur with everyone who spoke. And I think that what you would find there would be a lot of public support for would be a public park. And um, I think you would also find a lot of people would be willing to give their time to making that happen doing cleanups, public works, like honestly, make it a park, everyone's gonna be happy, go build your house in Glendale. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Next caller is Didia Delizer. Thank you, can you hear me? I sure can. Thank you. My name is, and I'll keep it short, I have a prepared statement. My name is- uh, Excuse me, uh, did you mail that in? By chance? I did not. I oh, did. If you could email that to me, I would appreciate it. It's, <laughs> it's much easier to read it off I will the paper than trying to take uh, notes. I, so I, I will type it up. I, it, it, it's not currently effectively written, but I will make it so. I would um, appreciate that. And and I'll make I'll keep my comments right now very brief. My name well, is. You can yeah, speak my name as is. Long as you might. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're very generous, and I appreciate that very much. I'm a 28 year resident of Lincoln Heights and I'm a geography professor at Cal State Fullerton. My research analyzes urban landscapes. I urge you to deny the permit request for this property. Los Angeles is a city unique in the world. It's a global city ringed and transected by pristine mountains and hills, our wilderness ridgelines and we as a city and as a people have preserved these wilderness assets through more than 150 years of enormous population growth and expansive urban development below. We're all familiar with the majestic San Gabriels and Santa Monica's that frame our great city. No less a public resource are the connected network of hilltop wilderness ridgelines that form a view shed for all Angelinos and all who visit and pass through our city. These undeveloped ridgelines grace our urban vistas with wilderness wherever we gaze. This land called Flat Top is visible view shed for all the millions of drivers on Interstate 5 for the urban commuters headed eastbound from downtown as they pop through the tunnels, this undeveloped ridgeline serves as a beacon of nature in the city. I urge you to continue our careful protection of ridgeline landscapes of this hill so that all of us, past, present, and future, may continue to share these unique and precious wilderness resources amid our great city. And I want to add, in response to Mr. Mora, the developer's comments, 
the paper streets he spoke of and vacant lots his client has purchased are wilderness land. They're paper streets because they've never been developed. They're vacant lots because they've never been developed. It's not a place where a house has been torn down and left empty. It's never been developed. This neighborhood, you can see if you walk the ridge line, and this house would break the ridge line, which is clear from the illustrations in Mr. Mora's presentation. This house, when if you walk the ridge line, you can see all the houses below on all sides. You can see that this neighborhood has not one swimming pool anywhere and not one 4,000 square foot home. I urge you to deny the request and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Next caller is Jaime Iscamila. I may you can unmute yourself. All right, can you hear me? I can. All right, I'm gonna make this quick. Uh, I when I was nine years old, that was back in 2009. I lived in Echo Park, and my family had to move to Lincoln Heights through the gentrification that happened in Echo Park. And seeing that happen in this community that I call my home now is just so heartbreaking to see. And like the previous caller just said, where you see another 4,000 square foot, you know, mansion, that, that's a castle that doesn't need to be uh, at the top of, you know, uh, a community space. Uh, yeah, it, it, there's just a lot of pushback from the community. And if you're not listening to the community that you want to be a part of, then what are, what are you doing, you know? Uh, it, it's just kind of like a slap in the face. You seeing all the, uh, the the developers trying to, you know, push this push this on the community when the community has spoken and we're very vocal that we don't want this, you know, who who in this neighborhood, who, which more than half live under the poverty line, um, is gonna look at that and you know, th think and uh, that they're they're gonna achieve that. You know, it's just another reminder that, yeah, you're down there and we're going to be up here in our capital. Uh, that, that's, that's really it. Um, it. It's not good for the community. The, the, the few, you know, birds that I do see up there, uh, they're probably not going to be there for long after, if this development goes through, you know. And just from 20 years ago, from what I've heard from people who've lived here, the wildlife that lived up there, it's, it's nothing like it was before. So just, yeah, the, the it's just gonna wreak havoc on the ecosystem of the hill and the community space that we all share. That's all. Thanks, sir. Next caller is Candace Maples. Yes, hi, can you hear me? I sure can. Okay, great. Uh, I just wanted to add that the, the posting that is at the base of the hill doesn't have any meeting information on it. It's completely blank, and I can send you picture evidence of that if, if that's helpful. Someone had mentioned that the, that there was a, you know, a posting put about the meeting, and it's there's nothing on the posting. It just says public hearing, and there's no information where it's supposed to be, like, filled out at what time the meeting is or what day or even what's being proposed. Okay, thank you. Uh, I am in opposition of the proposed projects. The three reasons given do not outweigh what is being taken away from our community. I am a resident, my partner owns our house in Lincoln Heights. I was a real estate appraiser for 10 years and to take away this particular open space will have direct negative effect on property values due to destroying the natural resource of Lincoln Heights the oldest neighborhood in Los Angeles. The proposed is known to our community as flat top and has been a cherished open space since the beginning of Los Angeles. 
to allow one oversized household compared to the average size house in the neighborhood at the expense of the whole community's open space will have irreparable consequences and have a direct negative effect to property values. All of Los Angeles benefits from this open space. To conserve is what our community needs. It was deemed sacred land and the history of the discovery site of Lincoln Heights Whale needs to be preserved. For generations, the community has gathered at Flat Top since it is one of our last remaining open spaces and is crucial to Lincoln Heights heritage and the direct value. With great respect, please deny this proposal. Thank you. Next caller is Alec Grant. Great. Um, first, uh, my name is Alexia Grant. I just wanted to first thank um, Mr. Roush and Mr. Jefferson for giving us the time. And I just think it speaks volumes that every single caller that has added to public testimony has opposed and vocally opposed this project, proposed project, especially since the early beginnings. And I just wanted to fully say that I'm fully behind the community members. I've been part of Northeast LA since 1996, the year I was born. And I've been so fortunate to call Lincoln Heights uh, my home for the last three, four years. And I think the only other point I really wanted to add, I completely agree with each and every speaker, is that it's completely criminal to say that this housing, uh, this one single family housing unit would help the housing crisis. Um, I think it's just really criminal that you use the housing crisis to your own personal gains and use it as one of your main arguments to because this land. But again, I thank you for giving us the time to speak about what we care about and, and stand up for our own community. So hope you guys have a good day. Thank you. Next hand raised is by Colteed. If you may please state your name as well. Hello, my name is Ethan Arias. Um, I live right here in the city of Lincoln Heights, and um, I like agree with all like the other speakers. That I also agree with the first speaker that it should be made into like a a park. That would be like pretty cool. But I just strongly like agree with all the speakers, and um, that's all I have to say. That I don't think it should be like built into a house. I think that's that's pretty dumb. But yeah, that's it. Thank you, sir. Next caller is by Sarah Clinton. Hi. <clears throat> hey, uh, Charlie, I really want to thank you for having us here today. Um, I'm the president of Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council. Um, uh, we issued a letter uh, denying the project. Um, I'm just going to read some excerpts from it. Um, I'm the president of Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council and chair of the Planning and Land Use Committee. Uh, all right. Letter of denial, dated 10 or 11 4 21. Uh, the LHNC represents an historic low income POC community significantly impacted by real estate development, especially out of scale mansions on Flat Top Hill. Flat Top is one of the last open green spaces in Lincoln Heights. Um, the LHNC opposes this project and is strongly concerned that the impact of a 4,033 square foot single family home will irreversibly destroy Flat Top Hill, a sacred site under AB 52. It was identified a sacred site. Uh, this project will resonate into our hills with adverse effects on our stakeholders with the export of 645 cubic yards of earth and 745 cubic yards of grading in an ecologically sensitive area. Um, the LHNC Planning and Land Use Committee took up this item on November 3rd, 2021 and voted unanimously to oppose the project. Um, a board and community members questioned the destruction of a sacred site, noticed that the scale was out of character for the community, noted the fragile geological composition of Flattop Hill, cited the need for preservation of green space, and stated a preference for a project that didn't impede on a beloved natural resource that has been communally used for thousands of years and is known internationally as a site for the people. If this project is allowed to be built, it would also violate the city's own stated objectives in the Northeast Hillside Ordinance. Um, I just have a couple notes here uh, for Mr. Roush. Um, so uh, the applicant's proposed turnaround site. So the applicant um, purchased five lots up there. And so there are two lots. Um, 
on the west side, it's 2831 and 2835, 2831 and 2825 Pruitt. Those are um, landslide zone under Zemus. So if fire trucks are turning around, uh, that's a landslide zone. And then the, the parcel just uh, touching 2831 to the north, that has uh, a storm damage. I believe it's infill now. So, it, you know, that's also um, not uh, sustainable. Um, mm, ah, geez, one second. Uh, ha, ha. Let's see. Uh, oh, and uh, we want to thank Mr. Rosalio Munoz for speaking at the beginning. Um, if anybody doesn't know, he was the organizer of the Chicano Moratorium and the East LA walkouts and has been an organizer for decades here in Lincoln Heights through Church of Epiphany. Um, we want to also mention that the applicant purchased the land and applied for a new construction about that the month he purchased the land. Um, there is a, uh, a, pap uh, a path up Pruitt public right away path going up the hill um, on that property that has been there for generations. And I want to say another thing, um, this hill was blocked off by a gate on Thomas Street imposed by another neighborhood, Montecito Heights, in the late 80s to stop people from cruising, to stop the people of Lincoln Heights from accessing their own hilltop. Um, and it was approved by uh, Gloria Molina, and it's illegal. Um, and now the hilltop is being marketed as a gated community. Um, also, uh, yeah, so the houses that are already built there who, that have been built in the past decade, I think there are, well, there are three of them right now. Um, they've been sitting vacant, not sold. They're eroding off the hillside. Um, and there's a uh, mansion on uh, Paradise Drive that is now slated for demo that has never been lived in, that was approved by LADBS at the same time as that Bel Air mansion. That's now like a really big deal. Um, there's an issue with uh, people building these giant mansions and then, uh, you know, leaving them vacant and then, you know, I guess LADBS is red tagging them. And I also want to mention that, so the four parcels going down the hill that they bought, there's 2830 and then 2824, right? And then there's, below that, there's 2818 and 2810. Uh, I believe 2810 is infill, um, and I guess that's about it. Uh, yeah, we uh, voted to deny this project for the sake of the community. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am, and I do have the Neighborhood Council's letter. Um, if there's anything else that you just said that you want to put in writing, if you could email it to me, that would be fine. All right, thank you. Uh, do you got my email address? Yes, I have earlier. it. Earlier? Thank okay. you, Charlie. Next caller is Stephanie Morales. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Okay, um, I grew up in Lincoln Heights, went to Lincoln High School, and um, I'm just very saddened by, by this project as I feel that the hills Flat Top and Paradise Hills, they're both um, sacred and historic. And um, they're my favorite places, my favorite views. I feel like there's nothing in LA like them. <clears throat> I just feel we need to preserve it, not, not just for the community, but for the wildlife. And um, those hills just mean a lot, a lot to me and and my family, and I just want, you know, to, to stop the project. That's it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Next caller is Elizandro Humana. Hi, good morning. My name is Elizandro Humana, and uh, I'm a homeowner just below Flat Top along Sierra. And uh, I'm I'm new to the Lincoln Heights community. I was born and raised in Echo Park, um, and uh, I lived there for um, 39 years, really, in that community. I was eventually just recently priced out. My family worked very hard. Uh, uh, we're all Cal State Lake graduates. We're all educators along uh, in in this community that we're talking about right now. I work at East Lake College, and. Um, 
you know, I'm just real concerned with the with the development that's planned here and along other places of Lincoln Heights, having the experience of uh, being uh, in Echo Park over the last 20 years, seeing the changes there. Uh, I just know what's going to happen once a project like this is accepted uh, or allowed. It's uh, a domino effect. Uh, you could already see it along some of the other hills uh, behind uh, going up towards Paradise Hill. And I think the one of the things that I always do uh, when, whenever I go into any community is, is listen to the people who have been there, right? Listen to the residents. And, and I think Rosario, uh, the first speaker, just hit it on the nail, right? He's, he's the OG right there. And, um, and my understanding of this entire community is that it is um, traditional lands of the Tungwa people, just as he said, I did all that research myself. I am also indigenous Nahua Pipil, which are Nahua people just like the Tungwa of Central America. I was here, um, here as a, because my parents had to migrate as a political, as political refugees due to the U.S. involvement in Central America in the 80s, right, in the 70s. So I think the entire community had requesting that we create uh, a park up in uh, Flat Top, create a park on Paradise uh, Hill. And uh, as a homeowner here who works very hard working class to be able to afford uh, to live in this community, I as a homeowner feel that we should have green spaces here for our residents and, and, and have uh, housing um, being addressed in other kinds of ways, not these humongous mansions up on these hilltops. So uh, I, I, I thank you for allowing us to still send emails and letters. I'll be working on the letter uh, along with the rest of my family to uh, to express our, our, our sentiments of this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next caller is by Elizabeth. Hi, can you hear me okay? Sure can. Hi, uh, my name is Elizabeth Abrams, and I'm a homeowner in Happy Valley. I'm a relative newcomer to this area, but in the two years that I've been here, it's been really obvious how special Flat Top is to this neighborhood. And I would also like to echo all the sentiments expressed by the speakers before me. I'm not going to try to repeat any people's specific points. I just think that what we need right now is to understand that just because it's zoned for development and just because this person is the legal owner of this land, it doesn't make it right for them to build this building, you know, for their family and only for their family. This land needs to be accessible to the community. And um, I would just beseech them, the home, the property owner and the developer and the city to just, you know, let's let's just stop the pain right here and do the right thing. And let's find a way to keep this land accessible to the public now and forever. And I don't mean accessible like they can see the view around their house. I mean, let's make it a park. Let's, let's make it official. It's for everyone, not just for one family. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next caller is from Max. Hi, do you hear me? Sure can. Hi, um, I sent in a letter and I'm going to be uh, repeating uh, one or two points that I uh, okay. uh, wrote in there. Um, I am a 10-year uh, long resident of Lincoln Heights. And uh, one of the first things that I discovered uh, here was Flat Top. Um, I live uh, right on Alta Street, right below Flat Top. And when I actually went up there for the first time, I had one of the few times, for few moments in my life where something local to my area felt so incredibly special and precious. And I always thought to myself, like, I can't believe I get to live next to this. So uh, I can't imagine how anyone else who's been here a lot longer than me uh, would feel about it. Um, so I just want to then say that um, I think the owners of these plots of land have a moral responsibility to refrain from building on it. Uh, I think this land should be uh, donated to the city for eventual conversion to a parkland or at least sold to another buyer who actually cares about the community 
because uh, it's clear that these people do not, and they do, and therefore do not deserve to have their quote unquote dream home built here on our back. So what I mean is that education is a form of socioeconomic violence. Uh, its long term effects are quite stark. And basically, if they were to build this house, uh, it's basically at the cost of everyone else. Um, and I guess that's all I can say about it. Thank you. Thank you. And you've got a letter in the file? Yes. I hear. You sent it in an email? Okay. Thank you. Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay. I'll see you. Next caller is from Elita. Hi, can you hear me? Sure can. Hey, good morning and thank you for your time. Um, I'm a long time resident. I've been living in Lincoln Heights for at least 40 years. I actually live up here on Flat Top. Okay. Um, I really uh, would like you to deny this project just because I know the issues living on the hillside. You know, my house was built during um, the Great Depression. I'm up here on the hills. Um, yeah, there's, you know, there's um, retaining walls. It really doesn't really help with landslides. You know what I mean? Every time it rains, you know, we do live in fear. Remember, you do have uh, our only local major high school in the area here right down the street. The traffic that this building would cause uh, would greatly impact our students here. I have um, students going to Lincoln High School, and um, that's my way in and out. Also, the pollution, these kids already live in LA. They have enough pollution going on. You know, you're going to cause some more um, lab movement and pollution um, to our kids. Also, um, this is an open space. I walk there daily, and I... You know, I drive out there daily. Um, so I really think that you should rethink this project. Um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a five mile an hour driver up on the hills. And honestly, I've seen um, trucks drive in and out. You know what I mean? Speeding past. This creates a, a huge danger. Also, um, on the houses that were built on Thomas, those three vacant houses, that were built maybe 15 to 20 years ago. Um, I know the neighbors that live on Pomona down the street and they've had much damage due to landslides. And of course, you know what I mean? Any builders or the city that allowed um, these buildings to go up are not liable for anything. So, you know what I mean? At that time when houses are damaged like this, who would be liable other than that homeowner who honestly gets by day by day because we're all working class and we can't afford a uh, you know 4000 square foot home the average square foot home around here would be 12 to 15 if we're lucky you know what kind of a person lives in in those homes you know what i mean just their income does not meet the income of the rest of our community our community is medium to lower class community so I really want you to really rethink this whole project and really deny this. Thank you. Have a good Thank one, you. you guys. Next caller is from Nicole Corona. Hi, can you guys hear me? I sure can. Hi, uh, my name is Nicole Corona. I'm 22 and actually i've grown up in lincoln heights my whole life i've lived on the north part of hancock street right right by where it ends um but today i'm speaking because i'm not in favor of the permit request um i know that my my parents and my family aren't either i found out about this a few hours ago and i've been trying to let as many people know so i just wanted to also speak on maybe how this hasn't been I, this hasn't been presented as widely to the community. Like, I, I don't know how my parents would have ever found out about this meeting uh, going on today. So definitely not everyone in the community knows that this is a project going on um, that is proposed. And I think, I don't know, I, I, that's just, um, it's, I, I have an issue with that because I know that there would be a lot more opposition. Uh, and, and it's just, been, it was really important for me to get on 
and express that for me. I've used the flat top space for like years. I go hiking there. Uh, I've introduced all my friends there um, for 4th of July. I've gone up there to see the fireworks. It's just a, it's a very important space for the community. And I've appreciated it for many years that, that, that I've lived here. And I just wanted to express that. Um, I also, and, and I'm, I'm really not going to try to repeat anything, but the representative Ricardo, what he mentioned about housing crisis is just, it's just embarrassing to me that you'd think that that's going to solve anything. Um, and it really frustrated me to hear because I was like, I fixed the housing crisis for who? Not for me or my family, because we're not buying that house. We can't afford to. We don't, we just rent here. Um, this, this space is incredibly important to me, to my family, to all of, um, all of the community. And it's just not something that I'm in favor of or know anyone who quite frankly is. And I wanted to express that today. Um, and I, and, and I really appreciate all the other speakers before me who have commented and, uh, talked a lot about like zoning and housing, and it's just helped me understand the situation better. Um, I just hope that this information can also be passed to uh, people like my parents who, who speak Spanish and might have a difficult time understanding what's going on in their own neighborhood. Um, but thank you again so much for allowing us to speak today. Um, and again, I'm really opposed to this. I And I volunteered to go clean up the space like as much as possible. I will join that community group that already goes there because this is how much this means to me. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is from Jennifer Wong. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm a homeowner here in Lincoln Heights. My house is just under the flat top hill. Um, I live by Ella Park and I wanna register my opposition to this project. I walk this hill every single day up to the flat top with my dog. Um, it's one of the few green spaces where I can walk and breathe during this pandemic. Um, I'm an emergency department nurse, and during this pandemic, I came up to Flat Top a lot to uh, walk and breathe and just enjoy our beautiful neighborhood. I also personally have come up to Flat Top many times uh, to pick up trash over the years, and since they started building that new house, um, there's been exponentially more construction related trash. And I think that the builder should be cited for that. I've, I've picked it up, taken it down, carried it down to my own trash cans. And I, you know, people in the neighborhood, I know other people in the neighborhood are also doing that and we shouldn't have to do that just to be able to enjoy, you know, this beautiful space in our own community. Um, I was born and raised in this community. My family owns the homes that they live in in this community. Um, I, again, I'm a homeowner here and I oppose any further construction on what is a gem in this community. Flat Top should be preserved as one of the last green spaces and parks available to us. It's already connected to uh, the park that they're trying to build towards the Montecito side of the same hill. Um, where Northeast Trees has been um, putting in native plants. And I would like to advocate for Flat Top to be added to that park because they're already connected. Um, a lot of us in the neighborhood, including my elderly Chinese family and elderly neighbors, we walk these hills for exercise. Um, we walk up to Flat Top and then walk over to the Montecito side um, by allowing this property to be built, you'll be robbing our community of a healthy place to exercise and connect with each other in a really beautiful outdoor space. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next caller is from Galaxy S10E. If you may please state your name as well. Hello, can you hear me? Sure can. Hi, uh, my name is Imelda. Um, I grew up in Northeast LA and I have gone to Flat Top as a teenager um, with friends and I recognize the importance of it. I'm in opposition to the development just because um, I work restoration 
Um, I work with native plants and I understand how detrimental it'll be to the native flora and fauna in the area. Um, we need more open spaces, more public spaces for the community um, to be able to connect with nature because as we all know, we are in a climate crisis. And if there's more development, um, there won't be any more future. There won't be no future for our children, uh, for our communities. So we need to kind of think about um, how that's gonna affect the future of our, our lives and this earth that we're on. Um, this isn't like something that's really minor and that won't be impactful. Um, it, it will be just because um, native plants, they are going extinct. By the year 2040, we're, um, 2040, we're, we're um, already, we might lose native plants up to like 300 species. So that's something that we need to think about as well. Um, um, so that's, that's all I have to say. I'm in agreement with what everybody else has said. This is really important. Um, we shouldn't be developing on flat top and keep it for the community and make it a public space. Um, I'm willing to work on that area as well. I'm sure a lot of people are. Please listen to the community. Don't, um, don't develop just because it's in your own self-interest. Um, thank you for listening and have a good day. Thank you. Our next caller is from Alex R. Hey, good morning. Um, thank you so much for giving the community the opportunity to come on and um, and just share how important this space and how important this land is to us. Um, I am a yoga teacher in the area. I've taught to children at the Lincoln Heights Youth Art Center Complex, and I've also taught to kids in South Central. And, you know, a big thing that I see affecting our kids, especially our teenagers today, is a lack of open space. And we know how urban um, green open space is a valuable resource for physical activities for people that live in the community and also has a great potential to reduce chronic illnesses and to improve health. Um, so building on flat top is not only going to be detrimental to the health of the people in the community, it's also detrimental to the planet. Um, as Imelda previously mentioned, we, sorry about that, um, we are in a, I'm, I'm working my remote job right now and I'm also listening to the calls with you if you hear a weird um, noise coming, that's what that is, sorry about that. Um, yeah, we're, we're in a climate crisis. Um, let me actually shut that off for a second. Um, we're in a climate crisis and we can no longer afford to pillage the earth for profit. Um, there was a recent, I think it was on ProPublica that I saw it published. There was a recent climate heat map showing the communities that are going to most be affected by climate change within the next 10 years. This is one of the only and last free open spaces in the community. So we need to not only not build on it, we need to turn this open space into a park. We need to preserve it. And we need to plant trees. This is for all of our survival. Um, we need to change the way we think. We need to change the way that we live. It is absolutely criminal to allow people to continue to build mansions when that is excessive for one family, for one person. That is excessive. Um, and our planet is no longer going to tolerate it. So, you know, we can continue to live this way and we can continue to, to build and to pillage the earth for profit, but sooner or later, we're going to pay the price. And so I'm imploring you, the community is imploring you, please listen to the community and please do not continue with this project. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is from Perry. Yes, I've, uh, I live in the next hill over by that monstrosity house that was built on Paradise Drive that was never finished. 
And I'm, I agree with all the previous callers that I hope you deny this project. And, and that's all. I'm just, I just agree with all the other callers. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is from Arthur Jones. Can you hear me? Sure can. Hi, um, I'm a 10 year resident of Lincoln Heights. I've rented in a variety of locations and currently live on Pomona Street. Um, I walk flat top all the time. Yeah, um, I would encourage you to listen to the longtime residents and um, hear their passion for this issue. Um, if there is development on flat top, it really stabs at the heart of Lincoln Heights. Um, the teenagers need a place to make out. We need a place to walk our dogs. It's a place that people live on and use every day. I think it's very telling that the people who want to do this development center representative here today are not willing to face the community. Um, I think if you look on social media, if you look in other places, you'll realize that this is an overwhelming opposition to the, this happening. Um, I've emailed uh, my sentiments as well in a longer letter. I appreciate you looking at those. If you ever want to come to Lincoln Heights, email me back. Let's go walk the hill. If you see it, you'll realize how beautiful it is, and you will also see the devastation that has already happened through irresponsible development on the hillside. Um, there is precedent for this. There's been a lot of um, blighting that has happened as a result of irresponsible development, and you can see that. that that's marring the view right now currently. So just please listen to um, the overwhelming opposition to this. We appreciate your time. Thanks, man. Okay, thank you. Next caller is from Chantel Weber. Hello, can you hear me? Sure can. Hi, sorry, I'm on a really no noisy street. Um, I'm also a resident in Lincoln Heights on Johnston Street and uh, live directly opposite the proposed development. Um, and yeah, I agree with everyone who's spoken before, like Lincoln Heights is an incredible community and um, Flat Top is at the heart of that community. And I've been very sort of actively involved in like planting natives and trees in the space and trying to rewild on the hill where we are opposite. Um, and I think what's needed in the neighborhood is more is more open space and and park space and not a luxury development. I think the development that's, that's proposed doesn't add anything at all to the community. It just takes away from that community and destroys it. So I would urge you to um, to deny this proposal. It's gonna it's gonna affect everything negatively rather than bringing any positives at all. Um, thank you for listening for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Next caller is from Brenda Contreras. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? I sure Hi. can. Yeah. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, I'm calling in opposition to this project. It needs to be denied. It's completely out of scale and illegal according to the Northeast Hillside Ordinance. So this project is also super disrespectful to the community and its history. It's a sacred site and that really needs to be considered. <laughs> what needs to happen is the community community needs to be heard. We need to put the community at the forefront. We need to support the biodiversity. Um, the zoning is antiquated and needs to be changed. There's a lot that has happened since that zoning was allocated. And um, this is a hillside that needs to be preserved. Um, we need to support the biodiversity. We need to restore this, plant some black walnuts up there, plant some natives. Um, yeah, so I'm asking that you just listen to the community um, if you do uh, um, support this project, it's gonna lead to more problems for not only the community, but for government, your hands are gonna be tied later on. Um, so don't set a precedent here. Um, you support the community. Thank you. The next caller is from Selena Ortega. 
Hello, can you hear me? I sure can. Good morning. Thank you for your time. Um, I'm going to make this very brief. I'm a, I'm a 30 year resident of Lincoln Heights. Um, I'm here representing my community. I think it's very important um, that we protect Lincoln Heights's um, collective uh, urban identity. Um, my community is very special to me, just like it, it's special to so many other people. Um, so I wholeheartedly um, want to reject this this proposal and this project uh, on flat top. I also want to say that I uh, I second um, and I agree with the comments that were made by uh, Ms. Belomo, uh, the speaker FS, and the the first gentleman who spoke. I didn't get his name. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Next caller is from Esther. Hi. Um, I, I used to live across the street from Glen Alta in 1949. Flat Top was our playground. We were, we were eight children. We used to go up the hill. We used to hunt for the bobcats, um, coyotes. We didn't do anything to them, but um, we used to hunt tarantulas that were five inches in circumference. We used to look for the trapdoor spiders. But um, we used to use cardboards. We used to slide down the hill on the grass, on the dry grass, or after it rained, the wet grass, the green grass. So I, when I was a kid, I never saw the view because I didn't have glasses. It wasn't until the 70s where I had glasses and I went up there and I saw the view and I could not believe the view. I get very emotional, sorry. But I thought nobody should be denied to go on the top of the hill to see our city. It's awesome, especially to see the sunsets. So please, I oppose the project. Leave the land open for the people, for everyone, rich, poor, anyone coming to our city too. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller is from 3339. You can press star six to unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Sure can. Hello, I, yeah, I agree. I just want to say I agree with um, everything else that everybody else said. And I also wanted to add that um, in the planning and land use committee meeting, um, the developer was saying how the uh, about how the uh, the um, owners wanted they loved the community and really wanted to be a part of it and grow old there. And if they ever had spent any time in the community, they would be like the other owners that I've met up there that have expressed wanting to donate and protect the land. They uh, realize how special it is, and um, also if they spent any time in the community that they would want to get involved to protect and participate in the community. I have not lived there long, but I definitely have gotten involved uh, as soon as I uh, arrived. Uh, many people I've met up there are from all over the city. People come there and enjoy that from all over the city and all have expressed how they want to help to save it. Um, everybody has a concern with that because they know how special it is and how there aren't very many places like that in the city. Um, and also, I uh, just wanted to touch on the fact uh, when everybody's speaking about how Lincoln Heights is so low income that uh, Lincoln Heights is the lowest income uh, city. The only place that is lower income is Terminal Island. It's below Skid Row. And the housing crisis is really, uh, you know, perpetuated by developments like this coming into you know areas where there is affordable housing so just really think that that would exacerbate that and I just think those are things that you know um, I, I really like how people talk about the uh, ethics you know that um, you know they do own the property but I know there's been um, a fight and different uh, you know I think there should just be an opportunity for you know us to be able to try and make it an open space. I know there has been a fight for this in the past and uh, different things have gone with that. And, uh, you know, even if uh, they do own it, it's a moral and ethical kind of a situation. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. There are no more hands raised at the moment. Okay. 
uh, then we will conclude the public hearing. Uh, it's been two hours, so um, I've got plenty of information. I'm going to hold this case under advisement. There are still people sending in letters. I have not, well, I uh, managed to have this? one more hand. Sorry. Oh, one more hand. Fire away. <laughs> Mr. Salazar. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? I sure can. Okay, hello, my name is Ismael and I live on East Lake Avenue across from Ella Park. And I strongly oppose this project as well. Uh, the people in Lincoln Heights have spoken. I visited Flat Top since I could walk the streets of LA alone. Uh, so please oppose this project, it is sacred land. And oh, the approval of it would be detrimental. Um, so please don't ignore the people as they have spoken. Thank you. Uh, as I said, I'm going to hold this under advisement. I'm not going to make a decision on this uh, right away, um, not because there's opposition to it, but because I like to field check my cases, especially controversial ones. So I haven't had the chance to get up there yet. Uh, I did see it uh, approximately 15, 20 years ago when uh, uh, my staff did the Northeast Hillside Ordinance. So I am familiar with both. Um, uh, so I'm going to... Uh, not make my decision for everybody to know i've got about 20 cases ahead of this before i even uh, will start on it yet so uh it's uh, down the line in my cases to be done uh it's an interesting case and um i thank you all for your uh, comments today especially the first speaker uh i may look like i had a smirk on my face but um i i got a big mouth and it smiles a lot <laughs> So uh, don't take that as a uh, not paying attention to what you're saying. I pay attention to everything people say and often make my decisions based on it. So uh, if you, uh, the file will be open for another two weeks so that you can continue to send in uh, letters or emails to me. Again, my email address is charlie, C-H-A-R-L-I-E dot Roush, R-A-U-S-C-H, at lacity.org, um, so you can continue to uh, send in comments to me. Um, and the same with uh, the applicants. Um, <clears throat> but uh, with that, I'm going to close the hearing at the moment. And uh, thank you all for your participation. It was uh, interesting and uh, useful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Ernesto, do you have any last? Final comments in Spanish. Hi, this is Cora. Um, I'm just going to try to summarize what Charlie finally said in Spanish. Um, <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Con eso se concluye las deliberaciones. Eh, él va a tomar el caso eh, bajo consideración eh, y ustedes pueden eh, mandar. Eh, comentarios a él, al, al administrador de zonificación eh, por dos semanas más. Eh, el, el correo electrónico es chalelie.rausch.org. Y... Y eso, si quieren estar agregados a la lista de partes interesadas para recibir la carta de determinación para cualquier, de, para el ítem, eh, puede completar el formulario de partes interesadas en el enlace ubicado en la agenda de la reunión. Y finalmente quiso decir que eh, él tiene, eh, antes, antes de, de, de deliberar en este caso, él tiene como 20 casos que tiene que... Eh, decidir, así que esto no va a ser una decisión rápida y que por favor manden sus, um, sus comentarios a él uh, dentro de las próximas dos semanas. Ok, that's it. Uh, Cora, could you add one more thing for me? Um, basically, if you're Spanish speaking and you feel more comfortable writing uh, an email to me in Spanish, that's fine. Uh, we do have trans people who can translate it for me. So, uh, if they feel more comfortable in sending it in in Spanish, they may do so. Y también quería agregar que si eh, alguien quiere mandar un, un comentario en español, si se, se siente más cómodo 
Entonces, eso eh, está bien. Eh, tenemos eh, personal dentro de la, del departamento de planeación que puede traducir. Ok. Thank you all. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, staff. That concludes all the hearings for today. Meetings are now adjourned. Thank you.